Hi, this is Jim Bergman, and uh, wanted to do a little bit of a demonstration on uh, how a draft hood works and what its function is on top of a hot water tank or a furnace. Essentially, the draft hood is designed to decouple the appliance from the draft. And the reason we want to do that is we don't want the appliance to change its operation or, or the burner characteristics to change if the draft increases or decreases or completely diminishes. Uh, a hot water tank like this uh, has a natural draft through it. Simply when the burner lights, the hot flue gases rise to the top naturally and they pull in the correct amount of combustion air into the bottom. The, the appliance operates completely independent of the draft hood, or pretty much for the most case. Uh, if we get really excessive in the draft, uh, we can definitely see an impact. Um, however, if we completely stop the draft, uh, we'll see very little change at all. So I'm going to walk you through some scenarios here. What I have set up is a couple of uh, manometers to measure some uh, vent pressures. I actually have this hot water tank tied into a, uh, uh, a power vented motor so I can actually speed up, increase or decrease the draft so we can get this uh, low as zero and all the way up as high as uh, 0.1 inches of water column, which is about uh, 2.5 times uh, the natural draft we would normally get. So I'm going to walk you through some different scenarios. Uh, show you what the impact is on the combustion analyzer and the draft, and then you can make up your own mind on uh, the safety of a draft hood and uh, whether or not they work correctly. So what I've got set up here are three different draft gauges, a Dwyer 460 air meter, which is a little styrofoam ball inside of a tube, uh, a, a Testo 510, and a Dwyer 1277 incline manometer. And all three of these are reading essentially the same right now. Um, this is a great little tool as an indicator of draft, and you can see that's reading uh, about point, oops, sorry about that, I had to refocus, 0 0.02, a little bit over, okay, so about 0 0.025. This guy here, uh, 0 0.02, okay, and it's going to read 0 0.02, 0 0.03 because it's right there, and then on our uh, incline manometer, um, you can see here we're also at about 0.2 inches of uh, water column. So the digital and the incline agree exactly and the the Dwyer 460 which has a little higher resolution um, as far as uh, the you know the reading goes is uh, about 0.25 so everything here is perfect right now. I've got my combustion analyzer um, zeroed out here and um, it's zeroed where it's zero parts per million 20.9 percent oxygen and I'm going to show you visually here uh, what the draft looks like so I have a, uh, uh, a dragon puffer, which is a uh, uh, non-toxic smoke generator. And I'm going to pull this in until I get some smoke going. And we'll get this puffing out here. Okay. And I'm going to hold this up to my draft hood. And you can see, I'm um, sort of firing towards the draft hood. And here I'm going to pull this back a little bit. You can see it's, uh, it pulls that smoke right in there. Uh, so the draft hood's uh, pulling real nice right now. We're about, right there's about a half inch in and out. Okay. So we got really good draft there. All right, we're going to go ahead and turn this thing up and uh, let it fire off. And we're going to get a baseline set of readings to see where we're at here. So I just fired up the burner. I'm going to go ahead and start the uh, combustion analyzer, and uh, we'll catch the, the light off CO. It's, it's probably going to be pretty low to begin with here. So O2 cells tend to respond a little bit faster than the CO cell does on the analyzer. So we may be at zero. It wouldn't surprise me if we're, we're right at zero because the, the tank's uh, set up properly and uh, the draft is good. All right, so um, again, we have uh, uh, the O2's running about 8.2%. CO's down at zero. We'll let this stabilize for just a minute. Our, our draft is essentially the same, right? 0 0.02, 0 0.03 on the on the testo, and uh, on the incline here. Again, we're right at that at that 0.2 on the mensis right there. So everything is exactly exactly where we'd expect it to be. Uh, O2 is down to uh, about 7.7 percent, and I'm going to scroll down here just so you can see a couple things here. Uh, that puts us at a excess air of about 51% excess air. Ideal excess air is 50%, so this thing's right on the money for excess air. OK? 
Okay, so at the correct draft, uh, with the correct fuel pressure, we're right at uh, five fifty percent excess air, uh, right where we're supposed to be. Everything looks perfect on this appliance. Now what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and increase the draft uh, as high as, the, as, the, as it will go. And so you can see now I got that draft up. Uh, let me stabilize this so we can get the reading here. Oops, probably a little too close. Try this one more time. All right, so we're about 0.85, just somewhere around two times, uh, two and a half times, two and a quarter times the amount of draft that we'd want to see. Uh, and actually, the, the Testo is reading uh, 0.1 inch, which is 2.5 exactly. And uh, down here in our Mensis, we're right at 0.1 also on our uh, incline manometer. So about 0.1 draft. Let's look and see what happens here to the effect on the uh, combustion analyzer. Now, we have really, really high draft here. Um, and you can see it increased the O2. Excess air went up about 20%, 23%. I'm going to show you here real quick on the, uh, on the draft hood about how much we're pulling here. So you can see I'm at the edge of the hot water tank and you can see it's, uh, it's pulling it into the draft hood. So as I you know, move this in here you can see we got uh, what I would consider uh, way excessive draft. When I get in close to it you can see it's just whipping it in there as fast as I can, as I can make it. So the draft is very, very excessive. Well, let's see what happened here to our CO. So I'm going to go back down here and uh, take a look at my CO. That was CO2. And you can see that CO is still at, at zero parts per million. Okay? I mean, it's dead perfect zero parts per million. So that is also um, exactly the way we want to see it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and um, kill the draft completely. So now, you can hear the draft shut off. And you can see that my, my ball is dropped. Now it's not quite down to zero yet because, um, and the reason it's not down to zero is because I have a, uh, it's not down to zero completely because I still have some natural draft going on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reach up here, I have a damper here, and I'm going to completely shut off that draft. So now that's shut, and uh, you see that ball has disappeared. My test is at, at zero exactly, and my incline is exactly the same, back down to zero. Well, now let's look. See, O2 has dropped back down to 6.7 and uh, zero ppm of CO. I'm going to scroll down here and look at my excess air reading. Excess air is down to 40% excess air. Very, very minimal impact. I mean, we're talking about 1 or 2% of O2 uh, impact on the appliance here no effect at all on the CO. Now I do want to show you one thing here and uh, I'm going to go ahead and bump because this thing's been at zero the whole time and I'm going to kill the tank and I just turned it, turned it on and back off disrupted the flame and we should see the CO actually start to uh, to read here. I just want to, want to show you that in fact it, we, it does read CO when it lights off. So there you can see now I turned the tank on and off once the CO went up, that's a light off CO reading we're seeing, that'll go back down towards zero. Okay? So that should start dropping back down now. We'll let that drop back down. Now, just to show you here, also, I'm going to get the uh, smoke going again here. And uh, you can see now, we are blowing away from the, uh, from there. In fact, if I get the camera too close here, probably fog up my lens a little bit here but it's it's definitely not pulling up the stack anymore so essentially what I what I hope you see here is that whether we have a normal draft whether we have excessive draft or whether we have no draft the the combustion of the appliance remains virtually unchanged and that is the function of the draft hood it's designed to decouple the appliance from the draft now do we want to spill byproducts of combustion in the house uh, absolutely not. This thing's shut off here, but if you really stop and think about it, if the appliance is working correctly, the only thing we discharge into the home is carbon dioxide, water vapor, and heat. Really not going to hurt anybody. It's going to put a little excess, excess moisture in the home. Um, maybe we don't want to have that, but it's not going to hurt anybody in the process. Um, you know, 
do we want the flue gases going up the chimney? Absolutely, all the time. Okay, I'm not advocating letting appliance vent in your basement. But I do want you to realize that the draft hood, uh, in my opinion, does exactly what it was intended to do. It isolates the appliance from changes in draft and allows the appliance to op operate safely under a variety of conditions.